Hi, my name is Bruce Stewart. I'm a technical service manager with FMC located out of Choctaw, Oklahoma. In my territory, I cover Oklahoma, Kansas, and the northern Texas panhandle. Well, today I'm out here in a cornfield in uh, southwest Kansas and wanted to talk to you about adult uh, corn rootworm beetle control. Corn rootworms have been known to cause damage well over a billion dollars annually to corn growers uh, throughout the U.S. Most definitely a significant problem for corn growers, crop consultants, or wh whoever has to deal with corn. The species that we primarily deal with in southwest Kansas in the northern Texas panhandle and the Oklahoma panhandle is the western corn rootworm. The western corn rootworm males are kind of brownish to green back and the females have three stripes down the back, dark stripes, kind of a yellow body. Just a little bit about uh, the pest. The males usually come out earlier than the females, maybe a, a few days to a week prior to when the females emerge from the soil. Uh, and then the females come out, they do mate, and then uh, they feed on the foliage, oftentimes on volunteer uh, corn that's come up is where you can feed them, see them. Also up on the tassels, feeding on pollen, and also just on uh, the corn leaves, you'll see kind of an etching uh, that they will do. Uh, as I said, they mate. Female then produces eggs, and usually you can just go out and find an extended abdomen of a female. That's kind of showing that the, the eggs are produced in, in the abdomen, and if you kind of squeeze on them gently, you can then kind of produce some uh, uh, eggs and kind of see them in there. We oftentimes call this gravid uh, females, just meaning that they have started producing eggs. With the adult beetles, they do feed on silks and they can do significant amount of silk clipping. Some growers are concerned or consultants concerned about the clipping that may occur uh, from the uh, adult beetles. But primarily we're concerned uh, with the adults and the fact that they're going to, the adult females are going to be laying eggs. So we're wanting to control those adults, females, so that they don't lay eggs uh, for the crop next year. Uh, those eggs will then hatch in the springtime the following year and the larvae will feed on the corn roots. And that's really what we're trying to do here when we're controlling adult beetles uh, this time of year, is not so much for silk clipping uh, or for pollen feeding on, on the tassels, but it's more about controlling or reducing those eggs that are laid this year. And that way we have a reduced number of larvae that are feeding on the roots the next year. Well, today I want to talk to you about Stewart insecticide. Stewart insecticide is registered for use for control of adult corn rootworm beetles. It was introduced a couple of years ago and has really been a game changer in controlling this pest. It's very effective right up front, has good residual, has limited impact on beneficial organisms that are found in corn, which in turn uh, reduces the chance of flare-ups of, of mites or other pests that might be there. Uh, steward insecticide uh, is in a class all by itself. It is in the class oxidizing. It's a group 22. There's really no other active ingredient that's in this class of chemistry. Uh, the active ingredient is uh, called endoxicarb. Uh, it affects the nervous system of the insect by inhibiting the amount of calcium that enters that nervous system, which in turn causes an uh, impact on them almost immediately once they uh, ingest or come in contact with, with the product. Oftentimes you may see the beetles still moving or active a day or two after application, especially if it's cloudy, low temperatures, things like that. They still may be moving, but you must realize that the feeding, uh, the egg laying, the mating, all of that's going to be affected, that they've kind of stopped any of their normal activity uh, just within a few hours if, or even a few minutes after application. Uh, with endoxicarb or steward insecticide, it mainly works by ingestion. Uh, there is some contact activity, uh, but you have to realize it has to be ingested by that insect to be effective. Um, so uh, getting good thorough coverage is essential, getting it down in the canopy where they, they are feeding, 
uh, as you know, they can feed on volunteer corn, the leaves of uh, the corn plants, silks, and other things. And that's where they're going to pick up uh, the uh, steward insecticide. Steward insecticide is uh, translaminar as well. That just means it's going to move into the leaf, kind of prevent it from being washed off or from irrigation taking it off. Uh, it's also lipophilic. This kind of means it's going to get through that waxy layer, kind of penetrate that, and get into that leaf and, and be there for a while. With steward insecticide, it can be mixed with fungicides uh, and other insecticides if something was needed. Uh, it can be mixed with... Uh, other uh, miticides, uh, so we haven't seen any issues with that. You know, if steward's going out alone, a surfactant might be needed, but if you're mixing it with other products, uh, it's kind of your choice whether you want to add a surfactant, but a lot of those products have surfactants already. Uh, with steward insecticide, you know, if you have western bean cutworm, corn earworm, um, European corn borer, uh, you're also going to be able to pick up those if you're making the application kind of at the time that those uh, you have young larvae uh, present. So with uh, steward insecticide, you're usually looking at uh, 6 to 10 fluid ounces per acre is kind of what is uh, recommended. The higher the dose of the product, the longer the residual. Usually we're looking at somewhere between 10 to 21 days kind of depend on the environmental conditions and rate. As you can imagine, the higher 10 ounce rate is going to provide a good long control, probably lasting up closer to that 21 uh, days, if, if uh, not longer in some situations. So uh, just uh, kind of dependent upon the rate, rainfall, sunlight, and things like that. Uh, usually we like, when it goes out airily, you know, the more the gallon needs, the better. Two to five gallons is, is recommended. Uh, if you can get up closer to that five, that, that would be better. Uh, usually with timing, with uh, steward insecticide, we like to see it go out once about 10% uh, of those females are gravid, that is, have those eggs in the abdomen, uh, just going out and making a, a squeeze test, if you want to call it that, and seeing uh, what percentage of your females are uh, ready to start laying eggs. Uh, oftentimes we kind of use one to two beetles per plant uh, to kind of trigger an application. Uh, with beetle applications, you know, you don't want to go too early. If you go too early, then your residual uh, will uh, not last long enough. And then some of those beetles could then uh, lay eggs. If you go too late, then some of those beetles could already start laying eggs. So it's important to kind of uh, use that 10% gravid female period we have found to be very effective in, in reducing egg lay. Another nice attribute that it can be mixed with other products readily, have not seen any issues. Uh, in addition, it has a short re-entry interval, it's 12 hours, so I know uh, going through and walking through corn day after day, it's nice to know that you can come back in within 12 hours after an application and walk through and scout and, and see how the uh, performance or the crop is doing. So that's all I had today, and I hope uh, you're the best in controlling uh, the adult corn rootworms. Thanks.